What's going on everybody? I am the Bad Duck and you are the internet. Welcome back to another video. Today we have a tier ranking video. This one's going to be a long one, so I suggest you put it somewhere pretty stationary. Tune out, do some laundry, make some food. I don't even know. Make it like a podcast. I may even put it as a podcast, but um, we're going to rank every single theatrical release CBM ever. Well, not ever. Since Batman 66, because that's when the first, like actual like feature length film for um a superhero came out so we have a ton to get through we have the whole mcu we have the x-men universe we have all the dc movies that have come out since batman 66 obviously um and this is going to be a lengthy one i'm going to try to talk about each movie i there's i've seen every one of these movies i believe um but again like i said like it's a ton of movies i think it's like 113 i think is the number um I might remember each and every one of them and how they stack in the grand sense of things. So, um, but I'm going to try to remember each one pretty well. And there's going to be a lot of hot takes. There's going to be a lot of um, things that you might not agree with. And that's probably fine. Just let them in the comments and tell me how you feel. Just don't be rude about it. Don't be rude to other people in the comments either. Um, but yeah, so our ranking is S A B C D F you see that S is from uh, like 100% to 91 uh, A 90 to 81 B 80 to 71 C is 70 to 61 and D 60 to 51 and F is just straight up garbage so basically it's like a test like if you get 100% you are the greatest test taker of all the time well here it's the greatest movie or CBM of all the time I guess would be the case uh, I'm going to start I'm going to try to start as early as possible i'm gonna mix up a lot of these dates so i'm kind of just gonna go um from release order then i'm gonna move into um alphabetical order probably if i can't remember each one i'm gonna go back and forth um uh, between marvel dc but there's also some movies like spawn that aren't part of the um marvel or dc so let's kind of jump right into it i believe the first movie we're gonna do is batman 66 uh batman 66 is a uh, ten pole film it is the first again like I said before it is one of the first theatric release uh, comic book movies and one of the first comic book movies to ever like be a feature length film um, that being said Batman 66 is very zany very out there it's very um, it's very 60s and there's no problem with that. that that's a lot of Batman can be very campy and Batman can be campy and I'm gonna go into that later with another film um, but I'm going to put Batman in the, uh, low B. We'll move him over later. I probably get 74 in, in my mind. It's just like, okay. Um, again, not, not the worst film all the time. Obviously B is a little bit different here than when you take a test because we have the S tier, which is the grand daddy of them all. But moving on into Superman 1978, if I can find it anywhere. Okay. It's right here. Superman 1978 is the. I don't want to say it's the greatest Superman film of all time because I really do like Man of Steel and we'll get into that again later because we have all these films to get through. Um, but again, a little bit dated. Obviously, it's going to be dated, but I think that it kind of stands up still um, kind of as like this period piece in a, in a way. I'm going to put it in A. It's probably going to stay around mid A to like high A because um, it's just that great of a film overall. And then we're going to move it into Superman 2, which I don't remember as much as the first Superman. And. and I know it's General Zod, and it's got that weird, like, Donner cut, and it's just, it's all over the place, and, I mean, when people are, like, bring up Man of Steel, and be like, Man of Steel, he killed everyone, he, like, blew up everything. I Reeves, Superman was literally killing Zod in the first film. Um, I don't remember Superman soon as much, um, so I'm gonna, my, my opinion on the, last, like, Superman 2, 3, and 4, I don't remember that well. Um, it's been a few years since I've seen it, so I'm gonna put Superman... Uh, two into the C tier, uh, probably gonna be a hot take. I think a, a lot of people think Superman two is better than Superman one. Um, I don't think so. I think it's the first Superman I've watched a plenty of times, and I still love it to this day. So that that's that's a difference maker. And I'll put Superman three into D tier. Again, I don't remember it that mu that as much as the first two Superman, uh, but I definitely know that it is not the greatest film of all time. It's definitely. It's got some moments. I think it, I think that's where the drunk Superman meme comes from. So uh, it gives that at least. I just it's all right. I mean, sixty to fifty one is not actually that bad when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Um, I test yes, but I think that's just like pretty 
like 70 to 61 is like average so it's just a little bit below average but then we're gonna move into superman 4 on the other hand superman 4 there it is the quest for peace is straight up garbage it is not a good film it is it's 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 got like atomic man i think his name is it, it's it's the denucleation film that wow at the time was needed it doesn't stand up to the test of time and it's just it's a rough film to get through i i've had to pause that and get through the movie plenty of times just to watch it and it was not fun to watch i, I needed it for the culture but it's not good um but right after the, the donner films not the donner films oh my god the christopher reeve films we had the, the reintroduction to batman to cinemas with batman 89 with tim Burton. um I used to hate these films. I used to think they were just straight up, like, booty. Are they? No. But I think that Batman 89, well, I think a lot of people would put it higher than I would. I'm going to still put it in the B tier above Batman 66, but uh, Batman 89, I think, was the reintroduction to Batman in the most proper way possible. You had to go to extremes. It's like, um, especially like recently uh batman has always had extremes when it comes to certain things i'll get that into later when we go to batman vs superman the dark knight and stuff like that so but batman 89 um was super gothic and dark compared to the campiness of adam west and i think that's the proper reintroduction reintroduction to batman after right around 20 years of other comics being in place i think this is right around like when batman was starting to get darker when we're starting into the era of like um like jason todd or jason todd already passed so like we're, we're in like in the depths of like dark gritty batman and i think that tim, with tim burns influence it made it into a gothic centric story and i don't think that's bad at all i think it really fits batman um not many complaints here i think it's again it's probably a, it's ageless just because of the technology they used um and the what they used around the scenario in the setting was uh they didn't use cars from 1989 they used cars from like the 50s and 40s kind of giving the essence of like we're back in 1939 uh when batman was first introduced and i think that um uh, it works and i think that the aging of the film is much better than the superman films that we just talked about um just because it they it, it used techniques that made it timeless and i think that's what the first superman did so well i don't think the other ones did that as well because they're just poor writing and just like overall just kind of poor quality but Batman 89 is a great film overall. Moving on, we're going to go to Batman Returns because, again, I don't know when every one of these movies come out. So I'm going to kind of run through the movies where I know they come out. And we'll get to the, the, the other stuff later. Um, so Batman Returns is the second film from Tim Burton. Um, a lot of people think this is one of the best Batman films of all time. Um, spoiler, I do not. I'm going to put it in C tier. I'm going to put it in low C tier, actually. Um me when we move over you'll, you'll you'll see at the end when <laughs> we get everything done but you know Batman returns is a sequel that is kind of just clumsy i think that it, it falls over itself i think it's just overall just kind of like a, a muck of a film and i'll he'll love it and that's perfectly fine danny devito as the penguin the right choice at the time but the wrong execution of the time uh, michelle pepper as catwoman was an awakening for a lot of people but I don't think that she's all that great. She's kind of more of a... She's a femme fatale, but at the same time, it's just kind of a boring femme, femme fatale. Um, in overall, I think just Batman Returns is just a kind of a mid-film in, in the end of everything. I think that Batman Returns could have done a lot, much, a lot better, but, you know, it's whatever. Moving on from Batman Returns, we move into the third film of the Batmans from the 90s and uh, 80s and 90s is Batman Forever. So this is Joel, Sch Joel Schumacher's first runabout with Batman and Batman Forever. I'm on the opposite end of most people. I think Batman Forever is one of the best Batman films we have. Um, and I think that it comes down from the, the, the neon gothic that we got from Ju Joel Schumacher. The, the exaggerated features of Batman. And just overall, the Batman Forever is a film that is not... It's more Silver Age than than the modern age Batman and I think that when we talk about Joel Schumacher's Batman it's really important to think that what type of Batman it is and I think that Joel Schumacher well Batman Forever is not golden age we'll get into why it's golden age in really just a minute but Batman Forever is more of a uh 
push towards that. And I think that when we have to, when we have to talk about Batman, it's what Batman are we representing? And I think that Batman Forever does it well. And I think Batman Forever introducing Robin was also a great choice. And I think Batman Forever again is one of the better Batman films. Is it the best one? Definitely not. But I love it. I'm gonna keep it into the beat, the A tier, low A tier, A tier. I promise it's not gonna hit like 90. It's like probably like around 83 in my in my brain. So um, overall, Batman Forever, I think it's a great film. Moving on from Batman Forever, we're gonna get right into Batman and Robin. Now, okay, so I was talking about the Golden Age just a minute ago, and I think that Batman and Robin is the perfect is the perfect Golden Age Batman, and it is the it's just the campiness and it's the campiness of Batman 66 in a more more premiere film type of way and I think that Batman Forever Batman and Robin is often um, disregarded because it's just camp and it's just it's useless pointless bullshit and there's a lot of weird things that happens and I think yes of course it's gonna happen and you know what I really don't care I think that Batman and Robin overall is a fun film and i think that while it's not great it has elements of batman and robin i think george clooney is definitely the best golden age batman we've gotten and so i think that batman and robin is widely overlooked and i think that we really need to reevaluate batman and robin in current society but it's going to stay in c tier right behind batman returns but it's not as bad as batman Returns. it's it's worse than batman returns um and it's going to stay there i promise <laughs> um moving over we're going to talk to the, about the teenage mutant ninja Turtle. Wow, that was a really fucked up way to say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, the original trilogy. Is there a fourth movie? I don't remember. If there's a, is there a fourth movie, I totally forgot about it and it does not exist on this list. So, um, yell about me in the comments. I really don't care. Uh, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie was the... It was one of those films when I was a kid that was really good. Um, and I think that it really just falls off it. Um, not off a cliff. As many people might think, but I think that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is um, it's a it's a good film for the time, and I think it's it's a good '80s movie. I but but I don't think that overall that uh, TMNT is the uh, as great as many people might think it is. I think it's definitely aged a quite a bit worse than the other movies we've talked about already from the time, and I think that uh, overall it also has to do with the suits, and I guess there was no other way to do it back then. But you know what? It, it, I'm gonna knock it for it, but they're they're a marvel for their time, but they do not look good right now. And uh, I'm talking about right now, so yeah. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja, Turtle, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, is not gonna fare as bad as good as people might think. Um, but I'm gonna shove it into the C tier as well, um, just because it. I think that it's aged quite a bit. I might actually put it above Batman and Robin just because. I have to give props for the. I think there's. I think the first one is the one with the shred, with the the kick-ass teenage mutant ninja turtle song. Uh, I'll play it right now if I remember. But um, just a big point if it is about that movie. And um, B also the suits again. Like I said, creepy as fuck now, but they were a marvel of their time. I don't know how the fuck they did it back then, but it whatever. I think the teenage mutant ninja, teenage mutant ninja turtles is gonna stay at c tier just right on average but i don't think uh, i think people might get a little pissy about that opinion moving on we're gonna we're gonna get into the second teenage mutant ninja, Tur ninja turtle movies i cannot talk today and that's so teenage mutant ninja turtles it has too many consonants and it's fucking me up so anyways um this is just a step down from the first movie and i really don't remember it as much as the first movie just because it is a step down and the third one We'll talk about it in just a second, too. It's also a huge step down from the first one, and it's kind of just a re repeat of itself. And I think that overall, um, it's just going to slide in right at D tier. And then we're going to move into the third film, and that's going to go straight to F. It, it's not a good movie. <laughs> it's not. It, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 is not the greatest movie in the world, and it's going to stay in D tier because it's, it is hot garbage. Alrighty. Let's get into Spawn. Spawn for the time... In the, C the CG for Spawn, great at the time, in the 90s. Nowadays, it is not good. And, it, uh, and it's it's a basic film of about 
it's it's basically a spawn movie, and I really hope the new spawn movie that's in production that's been taking forever to make uh, is much better than, than this one. I'm gonna put this at low D tier. Um, it's it's a weird movie. It's fun. It definitely deserves better. He's a much better character in the comics, and I think that eventually we'll get the actual proper introduction to Spawn that we really do deserve. Moving on, we're gonna go into Blade. The what? essentially created the mcu i and i think that a lot of people credit that to x-men or spider-man or whatever other marvel movie came out between 2000 like 1995 and then 2005 is what created the mcu and i think i credit blade for that just because blade was the first introduction of it like hey superheroes can be fucking scary and and serious and badass and let's actually add let's like get an adaptation and do it properly in the marvel universe because we like we've only talked about movies that are dc related and um it's whereabouts also i think i forgot about howard the duck howard the duck is f just by the way throw it out there Howard the duck f it's a bad movie anyways blade is a fantastic movie wesley snipes does a great job as blade and i'm gonna throw it into the a tier over batman forever Blade is fantastic, and if you haven't watched it, please do now, because Blade is what is the foundation to the MCU we have nowadays, and I'm really excited for the Mah Mah Maharshal Ali uh, take on Blade coming up, who just edited Mia Goth, which is a big W, by the way, just saying, if you haven't seen Pearl or X, go see those, because uh, Mia Goth is going to take Blade by storm, just saying. Moving on, we're going into Blade 2, if I can find it. There it is. Blade 2. Um, I don't remember Blade 2 as much. I, I don't... I, I know that it's good. I just don't know how good. And I'm going to throw it into the B tier um, over Batman 66. Just because... I don't remember it, but I know it's pretty good. And I'm... I'm I'm sure it's better than the 1966 Batman. So, we're going to just slide up there. And then we're going to go into the last film... Batman, uh, oh, wow, it's not Batman. Wow, I fucking suck. Blade Trinity. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, first, um, uh, first role on this list. Um, Blade Trinity is not good. There's a whole bunch of stories about the behind-the-scenes things, and Blade Trinity is just, it's a clusterfuck of everything. It, it's, it's not a good film, and we're gonna throw it right into, um, F, because it's not good. Honestly, I'm not even organizing these here, um, just because garbage is garbage. It doesn't need to be organized. But I'm just gonna toss them in here and, and say fuck you. Um, yeah, Blade Trinity is not good. If you please don't watch it. If you're that curious, go just just go watch Blade. Just go watch Blade again because it's it's much worth it than Blade Trinity. Blade Trinity is weird. <laughs> um, I do love that Blade Trinity is also where Leslie Snipes went started being crazy. Uh, I believe the actress, I can't remember her name, broke one of the only cameras in the world that shot in the way it did. I don't remember if it was like, I don't know if it was HD or if it was like something around there, uh, but she put the camera because she was such a good shot. It was, I think that's really impressive and I just love the behind the scenes things with Billy Trinity. But when you hear a lot of behind the scenes stuff, probably means it's straight up garbage. So we're going to move on into... The X Men franchise. Um, X Men is, uh, like I said with Blade, is one of the films that people like to contribute the MCU to. Um, and a fair enough point. I think Kevin Feige was this is Kevin Feige's first film where he was heavily involved in the process um, of making a Marvel movie. Is it good? Yes. Is it dated? Yes. So what are we gonna do about it? We're gonna shove it right at the top of C tier, just because it's great. It's good. But it's really, really dated, and it's just, it's, it can be hard to watch. Actually, I'm going to throw it into a low B tier, actually, because I think it deserves a little bit more love than the 70 to 61 range. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it into like the, the 74 range. It's good, and it, revolutionary for the time, but nowadays it's kind of a hard watch. And then we're moving to the sequel. X2 is a A tier movie. Uh, we're out. It's not better than Batman Forever, in my mind. I think X2 is great. Again, it suffers from a little bit more of dating 
than Batman Forever Blade in the original Superman movie do. And but I think that the Nightcrawler beginning scene, the whole everything with Wolverine and Rogue and X Two is fantastic. Um, I have to rewatch it. Uh, late. I had need to rewatch it, but it is a fantastic film and it needs to be much more celebrated than it actually is nowadays on social media. At least what I've seen, at least. I have not seen X2 Love in a long time. Also, that mansion fight, badass. I think they actually needed to cut parts out of X2 to make it PG-13 because the mansion fight was just so brutal. Um, but yeah, I, I think X2 is fantastic and it definitely needs more love. Moving over, we're going to talk about X-Men 3, The Last Stand, which also, let's talk about something. I want to talk about something. When you make a sequel, and you go like, okay, we're going to go from X-Men to X-Men 2. That's perfect. Fine. X2 works perfectly great. But then you go to the third film, and you're like, let's call it X-Men The Last Stand. No, the fuck you don't. You're going to call it X-Men 3, and you're going to be you're, you're going to be happy about it. Or you know what? You're going to call Or you know what? Go back, or when you made X, X-Men 2, use a subtitle. You can either use, you either use subtitles or use numbers. Because if ba the Batman Part 3 is not called Batman the Part 3, I'm going to be really pissed about it because that's fucking stupid. Uh, but X-Men The Last Stand, I think a lot of people hate it, and I think it's one of the worst films of all time. I personally do not have that belief. Uh, is it good? No. <laughs> not by any means. But I think a lot of people think it's straight up Dougie doo doo um, I think there's a lot of good things about it. I think that the uh, the forest fight, the, uh, the San Francisco Bridge moments are fun. And great. Um, the Dark Phoenix kind of shoved in there, weirdly enough. But you know what? Whatever. X Men Three was also one of the one of the most monumental films in my childhood. I think so. I have a little bit of nostalgia glasses going on here. But X Men Three was one of the first films I saw in theaters, to my knowledge. It was Spider Man Two, Revenge of the Sith. I think X Men Three was right after that. Um, but yeah, X Men Three is a decent film. Um, but I'm not gonna give it that much love I, th I think it's decent because i think i think i think it's decent because i have roasting gla rose tinted glasses towards it um and i'm not going to give it the benefit of the doubt because of that so we're going to move it over into the high d tier i can't give it that much love because i think a lot of it's nostalgia so we're gonna move on to x uh, x-men origins the wolverine it says something when your crossover game not your crossover game when your game Iron is better than the movie. There's not a lot of films that do that, and that is saying a ton. Uh, so it's going to F here. It, it takes away Deadpool's mouth. Well, the first bit where Ryan Reynolds is talking in the elevator and and doing the cool sword shit. Cool, great. I love the part, the first beginning of the film with the war scene. Great. But the rest of the film falls apart, and it's ugly, and it's terrible, it's overall just bland, it's it's just a gross film to get through. And, um, it deserves to be in the garbage tier. Moving on, uh, for the rest of the X-Men films, we're gonna go into X-Men The First Class, because that's the next one that comes up in, you know, the timeline of release. X-Men The First Class is the, kind of the reboot to X-Men After Last Stand, and... X-Men Origins of Wolverine didn't pan out very well. They still wanted to do prequel stuff, but they said they're not going to do it on, on a single X-Men. Because um, they were planning to do like a Magneto movie and a Professor X movie, which I loved, would have loved to see the uh, Magneto movie, and I kind of wish the X-Men Origins of Wolverine would have been a lot better. But you know what? It's better. Uh, but First Class was kind of like, hey, we're going to reboot. We're going to figure this out. But then when they get to uh, Days of Future Past, I'm like, can they kind of retcon that back? Saying it's just a different timeline. But X-Men uh, First Class is my favorite X-Men movie. It's going to go straight into S. Uh, it's the first S movie we have, but I think it deserves that place. I think X-Men uh, First Class is um, the greatest X-Men movie we've ever gotten. Um, and you can fight me on it. <laughs> I, I think it's a fantastic introduction to uh, characters that aren't used as well as, as much. I think the removal of Wolverine is uh, a positive in the best way possible. I think removing Wolverine from the main X-Men roster while maybe might be unpopular but i think that um other x-men deserve that shine because wolverine didn't get into fucking x-men until like the 80s i think 
It was like the mid 80s because after he was introduced in 1983 or 1973. But I think uh, Wolverine wasn't introduced to like 1981 or something like that. Um, but anyways, I think a lot of the characters here are well developed and it's very much a fun time to go through. And I, I love X-Men First Class. Moving on, we're going to go into... Shit, what's the next one? It was 2011. Is it Days of Future Past right after? No, it's the Wolverine. The Wolverine is a weird one. Because underrated as well. I think that a lot of people just kind of think this is just a matte movie. Um, I personally don't think it's that meh. I think that it, it's a lot of fun. Like I've said with the uh, X-Men First Class, I think that the reboot really helps Wolverine. And I think that going off of X-Men Origins Wolverine, I'm going to take it from the how bad X-Men Origins Wolverine is to how well this one is and we're going to kind of make it into the average point of that and we're going to throw it right into B tier behind the original X-Men just because it's good it could be great and we'll get into why it could be great um but it's not X-Men Origins over yeah it's not X-Men Origins Wolverine and that's all I really needed it to be so uh moving on uh Days of Future Past is beloved by many and for somewhat of a good reason. I don't think it's as great as First Class. And I think that's uh, that's the point I want to hammer. It's not that as good as First Class. I think First Class is overlooked quite a lot. Um, they bring back Wolverine into the main roster. Sure, whatever, I guess. But then I th the Sentinels and the thing... I think it's just a very bland story um, compared to First Class. I think that there's a lot of... Um, and being parts and a lot of confusion that starts to get melted here because it's the 70s, but like it, it the timeline gets kind of fucked up here. And if it was if they kept X Men as straight up, hey, this is a reboot, not like we're crossing over the storylines, I think it would have been a lot better done. But you know what? They didn't, and I think that's it. Kind of gets fussy here. And I'm gonna move Days of Future Past into the Wow, I just took a Batman from somewhere. Batman's right here. This is Future Past is going to go into the low beats here, right behind the Wolverine. I think the Wolverine is a better film overall. So, anyways, um, moving on into, you know, I don't want to talk about uh, X Men Apocalypse because I think that there'll be an issue with that. We're going to go into Deadpool. Deadpool is one of the better films we've gotten into the CBM era. As I'm going to call it because uh, we didn't really enter that until about 2012 with the Avengers, I think. And then kind of ballooned from there. And I think that uh, Deadpool is one of the better films from that era of films. And I think that um, overall it's it's really inventive and really fun. I, I don't think it's the best Deadpool film. Spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, but I think that Deadpool really did introduce the new raunchy comedy, the more R-rated stuff. And I think that Deadpool is overall revolutionary for the genre. And I think it's a, a very much of a positive thing overall when we talk about the continuation of the comic book film. I think the comic book film, while a lot of people might get bored of it now, um, I don't think anymore. It, it's it's. I think that Deadpool kind of shook that up um, and gave the opportunity for more adult themes and more raunchy themes to be to enter the comic book sphere that really wasn't available beforehand all right x-men apocalypse we're going to talk about it now um a lot of people hate this film a lot of people think this is the worst x-men film no it's not we're not going to compare it to x-men origins wolverine or another film we're going to talk about in a minute um i think it's quite all right is it great no is it fun yeah we're gonna just shove it into the c tier Better than these two films, at least. We we know we know we have we, we're gonna agree upon that, right? I, I I personally would probably put it over Days of Future Past, but critically speaking, X Men Apocalypse is a lot worse of a film. But I do like it more than Days of Future Past. I want to say that now. It's a very much of a hot take. Um, so I probably would put it like here ish, but not like. I'm thinking critically here with X-Men Apocalypse because I really don't want the heat from it. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, I don't want the heat from it. So, uh, I bet X-Men Apocalypse is going to slot into the low C tier. 
Moving on into, um, I believe Logan is next. Uh, but Logan, far and above, is the greatest X-Men film of all time. I, not even X-Men, I, I, I want to separate from X-Men because X-Men is a very much of a different beast than the Wolverine. And I think overall the Wolverine, um, like we talked about, is good. But I think Logan is one of the best uh, best films we've gotten in the comic book sphere of all time. I think it kind of outreaches its its comic book, I guess, genre. I think that like Logan is by far one of the greatest films we've gotten to date. It is the Last of Us mixed with the um, like dystopian type of like cyberpunk, and I think. Could have been done terribly, but I think with enough heart and enough like care given to the film, it really, it really just dives right out of the CBM, and it becomes a, a film that really, I think, started the conversation of hey, maybe because, maybe maybe comic book films aren't just for like kids and teenagers to kind of like geek over and buy a bunch of merch stuff like that. Sure. Deadpool may have started that, but I think that Logan may have just like stepped completely out of its out of the shadow that comic book films have been in. The MCU is still kind of in that phase, but you know what? Logan really does not stay there. Quite easily, it is a S tier film. Now, talking about the rest of X Men, we're not gonna have the same kind of kind of talk. Dark Phoenix, um, very forgettable, very. I kind of forgot it was a film before I looked. I had, I had to make sure I was double checking everything and made sure that uh, films were released at the, uh, at the proper time and talked about it at the proper time because um, I kind of forgot about the film. I believe I forgot it exists for a bit. It, it's, it's trash. We, we, no, we don't want to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. And we're not going to talk about it. Yeah, uh, Dark Phoenix does not deserve to be talked about, so we're not going to talk about it anymore. And we're going to go into Deadpool 2. Which I'm going to put over the first Deadpool. I think Deadpool 2 is a, a, it uses the X-Men mythos and it, it builds on it and becomes a much greater film overall from the first Deadpool. I think that the first Deadpool was kind of hindered by its lack of budget. Um, and while it's still great, it's still an A tier, right? I think Deadpool 2 uh, takes what it, what it, it didn't have from the first film and makes it better. I think that's also because of the director switch that happened between the both films. And I think that the introduction of Cable um, as the counterpart to Deadpool as he has always been, like especially in the video games stuff like that, I think is great. I think Domino uh, is as he beats, I think, I believe her name is, please don't I'm not wrong there, um, is fantastic. And I think that the showing off of her abilities is uh, fantastically done because, like Deadpool said, it's not really g great to like put on screen but i think um they do it well enough and i i think deadpool 2 is just a, a lot more fun and a lot more like let's hit the fucking fan and let's do it at full speed and i think they did that perfectly i think that um it's a perfectly fun film and i think that they it's better than the first the first deadpool i believe we're going to talk about the last x-men film to ever be released under the fox label before we got into the um, Disney deal, which, because we still haven't had any of those projects from Fox moving to Disney, I believe, um, besides, like, Neymar and Black Panther 2, which technically, there's a lot of rights issues, but I can talk about that in a whole different video if you guys really want it. The New Mutants is not a good film. I watched it recently, because I hadn't watched it before. Um, what's good about this film? Anna Taylor Joy. Was she agree on it? Maybe. <laughs> um, I don't really remember how well she did, but I think it just honestly enjoyed existing is enough. So I'm going to put it right behind X-Men Origins of Ring and right above the Dark Phoenix. Yes, this is going to be order right here because um, Anatella Droid deserves more than the last spot. Just saying, in general. I'm going to go for that. <laughs> um, all right, resetting back all the way to Spider-Man. We're going to go back to because that was in 2002. And the first X-Men was in 2000. So we're going to go talk about the Spider-Man films. Um, I don't want to talk into... I don't want to go way in depth with these films. Just because I do have things planned for something around the Spider-Man films. I promise you'll know in a few months. Um, but yeah. So we're, we're going to we're gonna try to rank them real quick. We're not going to talk about them much. Um, it's going to be very much a hot take. 
I'm going to say that right now. You're not going to like how I put play but I'm going to play these as fast as possible with talking a, a bit about each. Um, Spider-Man, the first Spider-Man, is in A tier. Great film overall. Great introduction to the character. And um, fun time. Spider-Man 2, I think, falls apart a little bit. I think that while we get a lot more Peter Parker, we don't get enough Spider-Man. And overall, I think that it's kind of just... A meh film. It's gonna be low B tier behind these future past. Not a fan of film. Um Spider Man 3, where is it? Where is Spider Man 3? Where the fuck is Spider Man 3? <laughs> um Seriously, okay. Spider Man 3. Um I think it's better than Spider Man 2. M by much? No. But I like it a lot more. I think it's a lot cheesy. I think it's very much a Spider Man film overall. Talking about a little more cheese. I think that um Yes, there's too many villains, but I think overall, um, this also, this one was a better shot. So I'm going to put a little bit of both Spider-Man 2. We're not going to talk about it after that. Um, moving over to the Amazing Spider-Man. A lot of people don't like this. A lot of people don't like Andrew Garfield being this cool guy, cool skater guy. I think that's bullshit. I think he's still a dorky little motherfucker. Um, and overall, I think that, I think the Lizard is a great villain. I think that while his, um, his, uh, goal is not the greatest thing in the world. I think that overall, I think that he makes it for a fun movie. So I'm going to put him, uh, the main spider right here. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it above everything. I think the main spider is pretty fucking good. Uh, the main spider 2. I want to talk about it after that because I know people are going to hate that. I love the main spider 2. I actually know what? I'm going to put it. Fuck it. We're going to put it up there. The main spider 2 is great. <laughs> I, I like the Amazing Spider-Man 2. I, I know it's a clusterfuck, and I know that I I need to think about it critically like I thought about X-Men Apocalypse, but um, I'm not going to because um, I'm not going to say more. Fuck off. This is my the, my my video. <laughs> Spider-Man Homecoming. Much better than Spider -Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man? Sure. Uh, is it better than the first Spider-Man? No. Great film. Just not overall the greatest film because it's, it's, I think it's too heavily hampered by the MCU's influence, and I think that that really hurts the film, but I don't think it's that bad of a film, so we're gonna go on. Far From Home gets a lot more hate than it should, it's gonna go right behind uh, Homecoming. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home is an S-tier film, not above Logan, what am I talking about? Um, it's gonna go right behind uh, uh, Logan, I think a lot of people are gonna, are gonna be hating on this for a few years now because it is, a, it is an event film, and overall people are not gonna like it because of the fact that it has a lot of moments where it stops for a moment and lets you kind of like soak it in. And people were supposed to be like clapping and screaming. I don't care. I like it. I'm going to put it there. I like those moments. Give me a lot of time to breathe and kind of soak in Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Sure, those are great points of the film, but the rest of the film is really good even without them. So fuck off. It's better No Way Home. It is, it is an S tier film. And then uh, finally, we're going to go into into the Spider-Verse, this is the last Spider-Man film we're talking about. Why did I talk about it before, uh, after No Way Home? Because No Way Home is connected to a previous series. So, we're gonna move on into, uh, into the Spider-Verse. It is an S-tier film as well. Far and away, the best Spider-Man film we've ever gotten. Um, the animation, the story, the the music, the uh, the, the characters, the, the voice acting, it, it's all magical, and the little bits and pieces we get from the frame rate usage, from the um, the story, from the character design is fantastically done. And it is one of the most groundbreaking films in terms of animation. And every film nowadays is stealing from it. Puss in Boots, the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, it is it's far and away one of the best anime films of all time, if not the greatest. Uh, combo film of all time. So, Into the Spider Verse, it is a S tier film, and it's gonna stay there. Fuck off if you disagree, because it is. There is no debate about Into the Spider Verse. It is that great of a film. Moving on. So we took away care of Spider Man. We don't need to talk about it anymore. Um, I realized that we just talked about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles a while ago. And we didn't talk about the new ones or the animated version. Where is the animated version? Let's talk about this. Um, I remember this not very much, but I remember loving it. So I'm going to just shove it right here. Um, yeah, I remember watching this a ton. I think I 
I think I broke the DVD when I was younger from how much I watched it. Do I remember it? Not one bit. But guess what? I'm going to put it there because I do really do like it. Um, just thinking about it, I think it's it, it's a good film. So we're going to show it there. Um, not greater than some of these films, but I think that overall uh, TM TMNT deserves to be there. Now, talking about the Michael Bay versions. Um, I, I don't remember the second one very well. I do remember the first one pretty okay. Um, I'm going to put it over Batman Returns, and it's going to slide there. I, I think that the designs are weird. Um, they're very large creatures. So they're very Transformer-sized, and I think that's Michael Bay working on Transformers for a little too long. Um, and so I'm going to kind of just shove it right there, and we're going to keep it there, because that's where it deserves to be. And I don't remember the second one very well, um, so we're going to kind of just shove it over here. I think that's with the crack. That's with crack. Never mind. I didn't. Now, now that I remember, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a D film. Um, <laughs> I, it's not that good of a film. Now that, now that I remember a little bit of it, um, and I believe they had a rock study and bebop, bebop rock study, we're gonna call it, um, which the new one's gonna have, but I think the new one will be a lot better than this one. So, uh, yeah, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is overall a pretty good franchise, but I think it also struggles with being pretty average on screen. Overall, the comics great. Last Ronin great. Um, just yeah. Um, yeah, so Teenage Mutant, Ninja, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is out of the way. Let's go into Superman because we didn't finish Superman as well. We're going to go into Batman after that. Uh, Superman Returns is a long, long, long film. Yeah, Brendan Routh does a really good job. And overall, I think that the set pieces that we had, the bits and pieces with like the bullet in the eye, the, the plane scene, um, they, they, they shine out this film. And I think that overall, the film is pretty average. It's very long. Like I said, it's nearly three hours long. It doesn't need to be that long. But I do think it's pretty okay. So it's going to shove it right into the C tier, being above Superman 2. Is that a high take? Probably. But you know what? It's not good. It's a, it's a 70 film, okay? We're not going to talk We're not gonna talk about it. It's in, it's in the 70s. It's got a 70% on its test. So, all right. Uh, then we're going to move into Man of Steel, which I think... which Man of Steel is a film... That is still very divisive to this day. And is that a good thing? Probably not. But I do really like Man of Steel. I think it is it's what really got me into reading Superman. I think it's a lot more human of Superman. People because people are like, Superman is just a boy scout and he's just does all good, but I think that Man of Steel offers a full to Superman to say like to give him more conflict and i think that that's what needed to be done on screen um since we haven't had as many supermans as we ha have had batmans um ex especially opportunities we still haven't gotten a superman film in 10 years Ho hopefully superman legacy out science man of steel i really hope it does i'm not a big fan of james gunn i've made that statement on plenty of occasions on twitter and tiktok and stuff like that um in on this channel but um i i, I really have high hopes to for the outshine man of steel and um, but I do really like Man of Steel, so I'm going to shove it into low A tier, right above Far From Home. Alright, before we get to the Batman vs. Superman, we're going to talk about the Nolan films. And okay, I want you to hear me, and I want you to listen, and I want you to not get angry with me immediately. I'm not a big fan of the Nolan films. I love Christopher Nolan, I love, and I used to love these films entirely with my whole heart. But the thing about these films is not they don't feel like Batman. And I think that when you put the Batman stamp on it, it's hard for me to get over that hump of, hey, this is kind of just like a like a thriller piece, not really a Batman. Batman's just kind of like the setting for the character. Is that like fair to say? Probably not. It might not be. But I do believe the Batman Begins is the best film of the Nolan franchise. Uh, just because it is more Batman than Thriller. Um, and I think, overall, the reintroduction of the grittiness that was kind of missing from the Joel Schumacher films does aid Batman Begins a ton, and I think it also aids the, the trilogy a ton. It's a great trilogy, just not a great Batman trilogy. I hate I, I hate saying that because I, it's annoying as fuck. Um, but Batman Begins is going to go into A tier. Um, right about Batman Forever and above all these other films. And I hate saying that it's a, they're not, it's a good film, but not a good Batman film. I th that, it feels like a cop-out, and I hate to say it, but it feels really relevant here when we talk about the Dark Knight trilogy overall. Dark Knight is a great film. I love it. It's, but again, the Batman thing. 
this video was a mistake. <laughs> I'm gonna get fucking shit, shit on for this. Um, Dark Knight is an A film. I want to make this quite clear. The Dark Knight is an A film, but I don't feel like it's Batman. So it's gonna get uh, not like points knocked off of. Why is it an S tier? You could fuck off. Otherwise, um, it's gonna stay there. If you disagree with me, perfectly fine. I really, I do understand the sentiment that it's like one of the greatest Batman films of all time, and that's that's fair to say. It's very much fair, and I'm not gonna knock you for it. You can knock me for it this take but i don't think the dark knight is a great batman film I meaning it's not a great comic book film not as great as a comic book film um but i'm gonna say it's still a, a, a fantastic movie heath ledger is far and above our best joker uh on screen um in live action because um let's not let's not slant the the legend who is mark hamill even though he's not gonna take the voice on because of the past of kevin conroy rest in peace the legend um but anyways we're gonna move into the dark knight rises um, you know how I've been saying, hey, Batman Begins is really good because it's more Batman. The Dark Knight's really good because it's a nice thriller. Um, and The Dark Knight Rises does neither. <laughs> it does neither. It's gonna go low B tier. Um, good film. Just overall, kind of like a meh. Overall. It, it, it's, it's whatever. Um. The Batman. The, uh, actually, no, let's talk about BB. Let's talk about BBS. I haven't watched it in a few years. I haven't watched the original cut since the original release. I've been, always watched the Ultimate Cut, but we're talking about thre theatric releases here, and that's what we need to stay true to, and overall, it's a mess. From what I remember, when I, when I originally watched it, I thought it was amazing, but I was also 14 years old. So, um, BVS is a film that happened, but the Ultimate Cut really does help it out. I think the Ultimate Cut is a lot better, and, but you know, you'll find out where BVS is going to go Right above Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first one from 2016, I think. Um, I like it, but I think the Ultimate Cut is um, probably in the B tier, probably around this area. Um, again, I haven't watched it in a few years. I stopped watching it because I used to watch it constantly, but I also thought it was really tampering my taste in film. It might still be doing that if you are disagreeing with me heavily here, so... Um, Anyways, Batman, Batman vs. Superman um, does hurt a lot from its its cut of of content. Movie I'm going to go into the Batman. The Batman released over the last year. I have a whole review about it. I'm not going to go really into depth with it. I also talked about it in the greatest films of 2022. Um, you can see more about it there. Um, it's an S tier film. I think it's the greatest comic book film of all time. Actually, it's really interchangeable with uh, Into the Spider-Verse. It flip-flops every day with me. Um, overall, I watched I watched the Batman more recently. It's going to go in the top desk here. Into the Spider-Verse is going to go two. Logan, number three. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing's really going to top those two. Those three. So, just anyways, right now, we're moving on. Um, you can check out those film, those uh, reviews and stuff like that up in the corner. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth with it because I've already spent enough time talking about it. And I don't, need, I don't feel like I need to do it anymore. All right, let's like let's uh, backtrack back into the early two thousands of uh, CBMs when they were start starting to get a lot more popular. Um, and let's talk about it. Uh, we're gonna talk about Daredevil first, and then we're gonna go into more of the other Fox stuff um, and the other film that I really don't want to talk about. Actually, no, let's talk about Steel. Steel was a film that Shaq. It was supposed to be based. It's not. It's based on the character of. Um, the Cyborg, is it Cyborg Superman? I don't remember if exactly. Steel is an actual character in DC. Um, it's not a good film. <laughs> it's not a good film. It's not even the worst one here, so let's put it over there. Um, Steel's campy, 90s, but it's it's Shaq. I love Shaq, but no. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not the move. Not the move. Uh, Alright, let's now move into early 2000s. Let's talk about Daredevil. Um, haven't seen this in a few years, but overall, I have I have good memories of it, but overall, I know it's a bad film. Um, it's a weird film. Uh, rest in peace, Michael, Michael Clark Douglas. Um, Man was a legend. Um, it's going to go into C tier, low C tier. Um, it's about, because when I look at these films, I, I'm not going to take these films over the Daredevil. I, I'd rather watch Daredevil over any of these films, so it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slide in there, and 
we're gonna keep it there i don't remember much of it i can't really talk about it in depth but yeah all right moving on to the other fox property that we need to talk about that we're gonna go with right row because it's they all exist uh the fantastic four films from 2005 the tim story ones are underrated they are actually i think they're pretty good films i really do like them and uh i'm gonna show this one right here i think that the first film is better the better of the two films but i overall think that um it, it's just they're fun films i think that you gotta think about them they're fun in general and kind of they're kind of just dumb fun and if you think about it that way you don't think about it a little too hard um they're really good comic adaptations. I, th I think they're they're really good. Uh, the Red Sil Silver Surfer, I don't remember as well, but um, Galactus is a cloud. Which, that does not help the case for this film, so um, we're going to shove it into a C tier. Um, I'm going to put it above Batman and Robin. Just because Galactus is a cloud. That, that's how we're going we're gonna to take it. Fanta a fan four stick. I don't. I don't feel like this is. This is much of a take. It's garbage. It, it, it's straight up garbage. It's bad. Do we need to talk about any more than than that? I think we all agree that fan four six talks. Cool. We're done with it. Cool. Great. That's all I want to talk about. Uh, Catwoman also terrible. Um, one of the worst comic book films. I'm actually thinking about putting. Back here, it's it's not good. I don't, I don't even think it was supposed to be a comic book film. They kind of just shoved Catwoman in it. Hi, Barry. I, I apologize for you being in this film. You don't deserve it. But uh, yeah, it, it's a bad film. Um, a lot of people like the costume for reasons. No, it's a bad costume. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the Ghost Rider films. Uh, the first Ghost Rider, I think, is pretty all right and i have a lot of fun memories of it um is it better than a lot of these films no <laughs> so we're gonna shove it right in front of x-men apocalypse it's not that great of a film but i do have a lot of fun memories of it i think it's a lot of fun i think overall nick cage plays nick cage and that's all you really need to know now the sequel on the other hand is is doggy doo doo it's it's not fun it's it's boring it's it's drawn out it, it's no <laughs> the Spirit of Vengeance is not a good film. Um, but I really hope we do get Ghost Rider back, especially Johnny Blaze. Um, I really want to see another Ghost Rider soon for the MCU. If it's in a special presentation, I'm happy with it. If it's some somewhere else, I'm happy with it. But we need really we really need another Ghost Rider film um, or project in general. I think Ghost Rider is a fantastic character that doesn't get talked about enough. And that's bad. I totally forgot Daredevil had a sequel. It's called Elektra. Which is also Dougie Doo Doo. Fox. Fox greenlit a lot of things in the mid 2000s, especially off of X Men. And they had some that turned out well. Like the Fantastic Four, in my opinion. But other than that, they didn't really have much luck. <laughs> it was just not fun. Um, they, it, I think a lot of the mid 2000s films that uh, Fox greenlit were what held back the cbm for a long time um and that's an issue so <laughs> yeah it's not great um speaking of other fox films i believe fox did them um the punisher had it has a film from 1989 that i don't remember it's not on this list so we're not going to talk about it um and that had Dolph lundgren i don't remember it I do remember seeing it, but I don't know enough about it right now, off the top of my brain, to talk about it, at least in some way. So, um, but The Punisher 2004, um, was my first R-rated film of all time. Um, I still remember that fight with the Russian that is pretty fucking bloody, and I think it, it I, I'm gonna put it into C tier, but it's gonna be in pretty well into C tier, just because of the good memories I have with it. Uh, Punisher Warzone. I don't remember this film as well as I remember 2004. Um, probably for good reason. Um, I'm going to shove it probably right here. Um, I don't remember much of it, but I don't remember it being very good. I remember that. And all of these other films are the takeover of the Punisher War Zone. So, yeah. Moving on, we're going to go into Hellboy. Hellboy 2004 released. Um, fun film. 
great film. Where is it going to end up? It's going to end up in lower A tier. Um, I don't remember. I got like 2004, a long time ago. I was two years old. I probably watched it around 2011. And I have watched it since. Kind of forgot about it until the new Hellboy was rebooted. Um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and I haven't. I didn't watch the sequel in, until a few years back. But um, Hellboy is really good. Um, don't really have much else to say about it. Don't really think I need to say much else about it. I think Hellboy is pretty universally loved. Um, again with the Toro, it's part of it. So um, he touches everything he touches is gold. So uh, the Golden Circle, Hellboy Two, or what's called. I don't remember very much, if at all. Um, but I, you know what? I'm gonna say I'm gonna rather watch this film over Ghost, Rider, not um, over these films, just because it. I don't remember, it, but I remember that it, it was pretty all right. From what I can remember, I don't remember specific points about it, and you know, what? I don't really need to. Um, the new Hellboy. Not good at either. <laughs> um. There's a lot of these films that here that are that were not made by you know Warner Brothers or Disney that are ending up here. I wonder why. Um, this is this is difficult. This is difficult. It's it's not even worse than Fan Four Stick. Why is it, this is not even worse than that? Um, let's put it here. <laughs> it's not good. I I feel really bad for David Harbour because I th I think he did really love playing Hellboy, but I don't think it's a good film. So overall, Hellboy pretty all over the place when it comes to the quality of the films they've made uh so we're gonna still go back to the early 2000s because again um why not be nostalgic um uh, hulk 2003 ang lee's hulk um really good cgi for the time um decent story um weird story to say the least uh, absorbing man is a choice of all time, it is a choice of all time, and that, that, that's saying something. Um, <laughs> overall, the dogs are weird. The the the, the comic style is odd. Um, it was odd back then. It's still odd nowadays um, to watch. And I think that overall, um, it's very artsy for what it needs to be. And I don't think that's a benefit to it. I think it's gonna go up in the D tier. Um, loved it when I was a kid. Nowadays, not so much. You know what, we're going to talk about the Incredible Hulk. Um, I, unlike a lot of people, do really love the Incredible Hulk. I think that it is one of the better MCU films. And I think that overall people kind of like slanted because it wasn't really connected. But it was connected at the same time. It, it was a weird spot for, for the MCU. It still is. And I think that overall the, M the MCU really does benefit from the Incredible Hulk being part of it. And I think that's going to slide it right around A tier. In front of Homecoming. Man, th this A tier is going to give me a lot of heat. It's not. <laughs> um, but I think the Incredible Hulk is great. I think that a lot of people don't like it for no reason. And I think that's a... That sucks. It really does suck. Um, and you know what? I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Um, really? And... The new Cats America movie is just going to be Incredible Hulk too. So, you know... Doesn't even matter at this point. You know what? Let's start jumping into the MCU. I'm going to talk about Iron Man. Iron Man 1 is, um, well, pretty basic nowadays. I th still think it is. It's in the foundational territory with, like, Blade and the first Spider Man films and just the X Men films. It's, it's, it's one of those foundation films for the MCU and the foundation for what we have as they come up with the movie that eventually give us. Like the Batman and Logan stuff like that. That is, it's super important that it is. How good it is, and I think that while a lot of films do the same thing as Iron Man with the the basic villain swap, I think that Iron Man does it in a inventive way, and I think it does it into a a fun way that it continues to still live up to its it, it's pred it's it's a uh, eventual successor. So I think uh, Iron Man is in an A tier film. And it's gonna stay. It's gonna. It's gonna slide right here, right next to Batman Begins, and right next to Blade. If you have a problem with that, take it out. With, take it out of the comment section. But I really don't want to hear it. Um. Yeah. Let's, let's finish out. Let's finish out Iron Man. Iron Man Two is a forgettable film. I don't think it's as bad as people uh, want to believe it is. Uh, I do think it's better than Iron Man Three. So we're gonna go th throw it into seats here. It's gonna go right above the 
uh, Batman and Robin. I, I think that overall these films kind of like fit the same role. It's, it's more about selling more than just the film. It's about selling toys and shit like that. And I think that Iron Man 2 kind of falls apart based off the introduction of Whiplash being kind of weird. The um, juggling the War Machine plot, juggling Justin Hammer. Justin Hammer also is amazing. I really am waiting for him to come back in Armor Wars. It's going to be great. Um, Black Widow, Nick Fury. It, it, they have a lot of juggling things that they're trying to do. And it, they, they don't do it well enough. But I do think it's better than Iron Man 3. Which I think is overall not the great film. I think it's one of the mo one of the mo one of the missteps of the MCU. Is it that is it a lot worse than Iron Man Two? Is it gonna hit the sixty to fifty one? No. But I'd rather watch X Men Apocalypse over. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna slide right here. But it is better than Daredevil. So like, let's let's take that in mind and let's be happy with it. All right. We're gonna be happy with it. Cool. All right. So our little adventure to the MCU is gonna stop here. We're gonna go into Venom. I like Venom. I like Venom a lot. And I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna throw above The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, the Dark Knight Rises, yeah. Um, I think Venom is a fun film. I think it's very campy. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think that a lot of people are starting to come around to it. And it makes me very happy. Is Morbius on here? No, because Morbius deserves less than F. Um, and I also forgot about it. I forgot it exists. So, uh, take that as you, as you will. But, um, yeah, Venom is... It, it, it's a lot of fun and I think that uh, I think Riot was probably the wrong choice for the Venom film but I think also that uh, Venom is a, it knows what it is and it does it well so it, it gets it's my love uh, but we're going to the Venom 2 which I think is worse than the original Venom I think that uh, Woody Harrelson is, is still weird as Carnage the Carnage plot is weird the, the screen plot is, is odd it's it, it, overall it's it's a it's a, it's a downgrade from the first Venom, and that's saying something because everyone hates everyone. Did, everyone in the beginning didn't hate like the film, but I think since Venom Two came out, they kind of like agreed with it. And Venom Three is coming out, so I'm really happy about that. But I'm gonna put it into D tier. Um, not much to say about it. I just I can't. It's very forgettable too. It, it's just I kind of forget that Venom Two exists sometimes, and um, yeah, it's gonna slide there because whatever. Also, they kill Carnage, which is stupid. Why would you kill Carnage? We're going to slide over to a film that's not exactly Marvel or DC, but it technically is Marvel and DC, or DC. That's Big Hero 6. Big Hero 6 is... Um, a lot of people don't remember. It's a CVM. It's technically a Marvel movie. Because um, it's from Marvel characters. Is it from the, the actual Marvel like canon? I don't remember if it is or not. But I love Big Hero 6. I love Baymax. Baymax is one of my favorite characters of all time. It is also... Um, Disney animated film, so I I really do love this, and I think that it's one of the better films that we have today. Um, and we're gonna slide it all the way before Superman one. You can go fuck yourself if you think otherwise, because uh, Big Hero Six is fantastic. Uh, sliding over to um, sliding over to the forgettable, um, uh, the forgettable runs of the litter we have here is the Green Hornet. Um, raunchy, but terrible. Uh, love Seth Rogen, but the green the green horn is not the move. The green horn is not the move. The green horn is not the great. Um, it feels like John Wick before John Wick, but really shitty, like really really shitty. Um, and it's hard to do to make a really really shitty film. Um, I and I think that overall that's just the green horn. Um. There's a reason why we haven't gotten another Green, Horn Green Hornet film. It's just kind of there. Um, you know what? Let's talk about the other Green film, Green Lantern. Um, I haven't watched it since it was released. For good reason. It's not great. The question is, where does it go? I think it's going to end up on the bottom of D tier. Is it the worst film of all time? No. Is it the best film of all time? Absolutely fucking not. Um, but I think overall it does some things well. I think that overall the CGI costumes, while a little weird, are done well. I think that uh, Hal Jordan is all right. That's all I really have to say about it. it. It's it's not the it's not a good film, guys. <laughs> we all know this. It's not a good film. All right, moving over to the other forgettable films. Uh, we're going back to Ryan Reynolds as well. R.I.P.D. Uh, which also got a sequel randomly enough. 
that's not theatric, so we're not going to talk about it. I never, I also never, haven't seen it, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Kevin Bacon, um, the other guy's face, like, oh, I can't remember his name right now, uh, in Ryan Reynolds. Um, weird film, interesting concept, probably better as a comic, and in, <laughs> because it's not a good film, so we're going to throw it over in, uh, below Hellboy 2019, because it, it goes, like, from here on is just straight up garbage here i can watch some of these films just, these are just straight up garbage um but yeah moving on to constantine with king out reeves um uh, let people forget about this, about this film existing i do sometimes too but um i do think it's a good film i think oh, this is avengers on game um but i think constantine really is underrated and i think that Constantine 2, if it's still in production, I don't remember if it got cancelled with James Gunn's taking over, will be a nice refresher of the genre. Um, and I think Constantine's going to go straight into the C tier. Um, we have a little Batman Returns. I think that it, that's the proper place for it. I think it, it's an alright film. I think it, it has a, has some things to fix, but you know what? It'll eventually get fixed over time. Alright. Let's talk about a thing that does not look like it belongs here the men in black series if you don't remember men in black is actually a comic series so it technically classifies it as a comic book movie will i eventually talk about these in the review i think so i just i need to find time to get around to them i i have other things planned i think men in black will probably eventually be it might even be like may men in black may um because there's four of them i'm not i'm not talking about international because um reasons I haven't seen it as well. <laughs> um, so Men in Black um, is going to... We're going to talk about Men in Black. Men in Black 1 is fantastic. It's amazing. It's going to go into the A tier quite easily. Where's it going to go? It's going to go right behind Man of Steel. Um, inventive, funny, creative. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio plays the main, the main villain. It, it's it's gross. It, it, it's, it's fantastic. It's overall, Men in Black is a weird idea, and I think Men in Black 1 does it fantastically. Does it do the best? We'll see in just a second. Men in Black 2 was something else. Um, I don't think it's great. I think it, it's, I, I think that there's a lot of things that really needed it to be uh, fixed. I think also um, the main villain is weird. Um, but also, I'm remembering it from, like, also a 13 or boy's brain. Uh, so, uh, Men in Black 2 is going to slide into C tier as well. I'm going to put it right behind uh, Iron Man 2. Just because, in overall, it's just, it's a meh film. And it's going to stay there. Uh, Men in Black 3. I prefer Men in Black 3 over 2. I don't prefer over 1. But I do prefer over 2. I'm going to throw it into the back end of the B tier. Um, time travel is fun. It's inventive. It it's it does it in a different way. I think that a lot of it's got a lot of good moments in it. I think that Men in Black Three is a good film, and I think that people who have not seen it should definitely watch the Men in Black series because it's one of the greatest trilogies. It, it, I know it doesn't look like it from how I ranked it, but it's a great trilogy. It's just not the greatest trilogy. I was, I was pushing a little too far with the greatest trilogy talk, but yeah. Um, okay, let's jump into back into the MCU for a second. We're going to talk about Captain America. I'm going to throw the first Avenger into middle of C tier. The only reason I'm doing that is because oftentimes I think it's one of the better MCU films. Oftentimes I think it's one of the worst MCU films. I flip flop pretty heavily. I talked about it in the last when I ranked the MCU. If you want to go see that into the corners right now. Um, but yeah, I, I flip flop on it a lot. So I'm going to shove it right there because I don't know what to do with it. Um, overall. Right now, I'm a, I, 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 right now, I really don't have an opinion on it, so I'm going to throw it in the seat here, no matter what. Uh, the Winter Soldier is a big upgrade from the First Avenger, no matter what. Even in my times when I think the First Avenger is great. Um, the Winter Soldier is the better film overall. I don't think it's S tier. I think a lot of people will put it S tier, but I don't think it belongs there. Um, I think it's a high A tier film. I think it's going to go right behind Deadpool. Um. And I think that's a good place where I think, in my mind, <coughs> it, it's one of the better MCU films, but I don't think it's the best. And I don't think it also belongs into the 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 club, the S tier club, as it looks like right now. So, um, yeah, it's going to go A tier. And I, th I think I'm, pre I'm pretty happy with that. 
Uh, Captain America Civil War, on the other hand, I'm not a fan of. It's ugly. It's rushed. It's um, it's poor story. It's 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 still affects the MCU right now. But I also don't feel like the Civil War really had much of an impact after it, besides this COVID cords. Um, and I think it really needed to to actually cement the Civil War aspect. And I think they just shoved Civil War on it and like, hey, let's bring everyone back and make this. No, I think that overall Civil War is a is a boring film. I also don't think it's a very fun film. Um, things that have sprung off of it have been, but I don't think this is. I think it's going to go into C tier as well. Um, and it's going to go right around. <coughs> I think it's going right behind Versus Avenger. Actually, it's going to go right here. Um, yeah, I, I'm not very high on it. A lot of people love it. I just, I can't get behind it. I, I really just can't. Um, all right, backing out of the MCU for a second here, because we're going to get right back into it, because we still have a ton of MCU to get through, uh, even though I think I've tried to build it down as much as I possibly can, um, but I haven't, so... Uh, we're going to talk about Scott Bowman vs. The World, because it, you guys have probably been staring at that for a long time, and our computer sweats here. It is a comic book movie. It's based off a comic book. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Uh, both as a comic and a movie are great and fun. And a little weird. Not, not not even weird. Little just... It's a it's a red flag for people. And I, and I, I understand that in me saying this. It's going to be even more of a red flag when it comes to like people looking at me. I think Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is a, film, is a great film. And I think that overall... I, I'm going to struggle to place this. I think it's it, I think it's top of A tier. I think it's going to go right behind Superman. I think it's it's a fantastic film. Uh, very well done by Edgar Wright. And I, I love it for that. And I think that it, it belongs into this beautiful A tier that we've developed that everyone's going to hate. <laughs> so yeah, Scott Bowman vs. Roll. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, we haven't talked about DC in a second, so let's talk about DC uh, with Jonah Hex. It is one of the worst films of all time. Megan Fox is in it. Same with Josh Brolin, who is also in Deadpool 2. And when the Avengers movies, we will talk about it eventually. I will get there. I promise. Um, John, but Jonah Hex is not a good film. It, it. Did you guys remember Jonah Hex had a film? Yeah, I don't think you did. So, um... Yeah, there's a reason why we, we don't talk about it in the film. If you guys want me to uh, to review any of these bad movies, I will. Just leave a comment. <laughs> I'll do it. Because I hate myself. <laughs> but yeah. Jonah Hex, not a good film. Um, poorly done. I, I, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Moving on into the MCU once again. We're going to go over the Thor films because um, Thor is a very divisive to topic, especially on social media. Um, Thor 1 is a fine film. It's a very average film. It's very an alright film. And you know what? Average goes over here and it's going to go right behind Spider-Man 2. Actually, it's going to go Venom. No, The Dark Knight Rises. I think it's going to be right behind The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. Last film in B tier. It's going to stay there. I'm going to be happy with it. We're gonna move on. All right. Thor: The Dark World. A lot of people, I think, this is the worst MCU film. I think it has some redeeming factors, and it's definitely not the worst film on this list because you know, we have a lot of fucking stinkers. Uh, and I think people are over exaggerating how bad this film is, but it's still D tier. <laughs> it's still in the D tier. Uh, it's not great. It's not the worst MCU film. We'll get to that in a second. Um, Moving on, we're going to Thor Ragnarok. A lot of people love this film. I think, overall, it's a good upgrade from Thor The Dark World. It's a pretty mediocre upgrade from the Thor. But I still think it's one of the, be it's one of the top two Thor films we've got. Um, and overall, I think that it, it's a big plus, And I think it's going to go right over Batman 66. Yeah, I can't put it above any of these other films. I can't think of it as that um and then we're gonna get to thor love and thunder and i'm gonna say this I, I gotta say this before we talk about thor love and thunder do not comment last time i talked about the mcu and thor the, and thor love and thunder and someone i think they call me the r word and you know i always say when we talk about it you can you can disagree with me just be kind you can call me an asshole but you know what i needed a joking man like ha you're a fucking asshole for that but you know what don't threaten me don't call me a dick. 
like in aggressive manner. Thor, Love and Thunder, I believe, is the best Thor film we have gotten. And you know what? I don't feel bad for saying that. And it's going to go right behind Man of Steel. I think that's a proper place for it. And people are going to are going to disagree with me, and that's okay. But don't throw it at me. I swear to God. <laughs> if I get one hate comment about Thor, Thor Love and Thunder, I'm going to be really pissed about it. Um, all right, let's let's continue to knock out more of the MCU. Let's go talk about Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange 1 is a fine and good film. A uh, little forgettable. Almost forgot about it. Not going to lie. But I think overall, Doctor Strange is very average. Is that, is that a hot take? Is that a hot take? I'm, I'm going to put it right above Venom, but behind Spider Man 2. And I think it's a proper place for it. I think that's a good place. Everyone's going to hate this area, too. A lot of people are going to hate this list in general, and that's okay. I'm doing this it's for fun, and I and I think this has been a good time talking about all these films. I think it's a. I, I, I think Doctor Strange is good. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. A lot of people are disappointed. A lot of people think this is Doctor Strange in the Midverse of Madness. Um. Is it mid? Maybe. I think it's an average film, but I think it's a lot of fun. So you know what? That makes it a good film in my mind. Um, I think, I think people just are hating because they can, and I think it's a fucking stupid thing to do. Stop hating just because it's something's popular. It's dumb. Just enjoy what we're given. A lot of the shit is terrible. It's not. It's not the bottom tiers. It's it's a good film. Overall, it's a good film, and it's gonna. You know what? Just despite people, it's gonna go over far from home. And it's going to slide in right into the 8. Low, low A. Low A. Okay? It's a low A film. You know, what? I'll, you know what? I'll drop it down to B. We'll drop it down to B. Like a 78. Alright, moving on. We're going we're gonna to chip at some other things we have here. We have Kick-Ass and Kick-Ass 2. Uh, Kick-Ass, if I remember correctly, is a good film. It's a good it's a good watch. I think it's a nice B-tier film. And I think it's a proper place for it. Right about Blade 2? Sounds about right. Kick-Ass 2, don't remember very much. I'm going to throw it into C-tier because I don't want to talk about these films because I think they're just... I think they're... I think a lot of people like Kick-Ass because it's not DC and not Marvel. And that's perfectly fine. That's the way you think. I, I just don't... I'm not a big fan of Kick-Ass. I think it's... It's it, it's alright. So it's a parody of superheroes. We can do a parody of superheroes and do it well. Like Deadpool. And not make... And not like hurt the franchise. Um... <clears throat> All right, let's jump away again at the MCU once again. Um, I know we were just doing it, but MCU has a lot of films to get through. And we're not going to talk about Ant-Man Quantumanium because I haven't seen it um, because it's just brand new. I also haven't seen the new Shazam, so we're not going to talk about those films but um, today. But eventually, I may get to them. I just haven't seen them yet. We're not going to talk about them. And I don't think people really want me to talk about them. The first Ant-Man is a great MCU film. It's a great entry to the, the franchise. And overall, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, very much a heist film fan here, so I think I'm gonna show it right here. We're been the Dark Knight. Um, it's just a ton of fun. I think it, it's 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 a great film, and I think that people really hate on it for no reason. Same with Ant Man and the Wasp. People think this is also bottom tier of just CBMs in general. They think this is like the worst film of all time. Again, look at these films. Tell me this film is worse. And I've proclaimed myself as the the defender of Ant Man and the Wasp, and it's better than the first film. And I like it a lot. I think it's very much well done. I think that Ghost is fantastic. I think Goliath is a nice counter to Michael Douglas's um, Hank. And I think uh, Michelle Pfeiffer coming in and being um, oh, yeah, is it Hope? I didn't even help. Oh my god, with Janet. Um, it's a nice entry. I think that overall, Am and the Wasp is fantastic. And I think that people hate on it because it's it's it is forgettable. But I think it's a nice forgettable. You know what? It's like one of those films that when you're looking through your, your shelf, you're like, I haven't seen this movie in a while. I'm going to watch it. It, it. And I remember it being really good. And that's ant and the Wasp. I think people think it, they hate it because it's forgettable. And that's a terrible thing to do. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, we're going to talk about View for Vendetta. This is the oldest film we haven't gotten to just yet. Um, View for Vendetta, if you don't know, View for Vendetta is a... I think it's a Frank Miller work. And... I think this is the only one he actually liked, if I'm not wrong. 
But V for Vendetta is a fantastic film. It is one of my favorite films. Uh, Natalie Portman and Hugo Weaving do a great job countering each other. Um, it's a, it's also a very very political fi film, so I'm not going to try to get into it very much about the political ideologies and stuff like that. Um, overall, I think V for Vendetta is a um, a very good movie, and we needed to talk about it more often. Uh, and we don't do that enough, so we're gonna put it into the eight. Where'd it go? Eight here above. Um, a lot of these films. I think it's going to slide right between Am and the Wasp and The Dark Knight. Yeah, I, I'm happy with that placement. I think that V from Vendetta uh, deserves a nice place up here in the 80s. Pretty much. Alright, moving down to... We're going to talk about the MCU again. I'm going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy. And we're not going to have fun. Um, I've... I made it clear when I was talking about earlier with James Gunn. Um and everything. I don't really like his work. I don't think Guardians is very much a fun movie. I think it's kind of boring. I think that the character's very 2D. I think that the just it's annoying. I think that goes for both films. I think that overall, I, I'm not a big fan of these, and I'm going to place it properly where I believe it deserves to be, and I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I think that you, it's a respectable place for me to put it, thinking both critically speaking that, sure, it could be it's a good film, critically speaking, but, uh, in my eyes, I don't think it's a very fun film, and I don't really enjoy it that much watching it. So I'm gonna place it properly, and I'm gonna place it where it needs to be. And I'm I'm gonna place it over here. Same with the second one, is not much better, if not worse. So it's gonna slide right here. Actually, let's put Men in Black over here, um, just because Men in Black is better. Um, yeah, I think they're fine films, critically speaking. But I, in my eyes, I I can't like them and we're gonna talk about the suicide squad right now because um we'll go into the suicide squad but the suicide squad is it came with the james gun things it's very 2d very uh zany just like but i think that zany with 2d characters is very boring and th there's zany and 3d characters in deadpool and scott pilgrim um you can do zany in 3d you can but ugh, overall uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of James Gunn's work. I think that overall, that it needs a lot of work. And I really hope Superman Legacy turns that around. I think a lot of these are aided by pop culture references. Uh, uh, like, they're very reliant on the soundtrack. And overall, I'm not a big fan of James Gunn's work for those reasons. I, And a lot of people might hate that, for, hate that, but you know what? You gotta live with it. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Suicide Squad. Not, not the Suicide Squad. Let's talk about Suicide Squad uh, 2016 with David Ayer. Um, it is a fumble in a fall. And I was, when I was 14, this was literally the film I was waiting for because it was the first Harley Quinn in live action uh, in on theater in, in the movies. Because I believe she was in Smallville. Um, and it was it was a lot of villains we hadn't seen before, and I thought it was be fun with the the Bohemian Rhapsody. But in the end, it was trying to replicate Guardians and failing to do so. I think that's why Suicide Squad they got James Gunn, which I don't really agree with. It was a good option because why are we, why are we just trying to do Guardians? Guardians is we can do stuff that, that's different. Uh, the Suicide Squad is a poor film. It should have been the team versus Joker, not Enchantress, and whatever the other things were. Overall, the film is a it's a it's a bad time. It's not fun. Um, the only good, the only shining spots I really say the film are Dead Show with Bobby Will Smith and uh, Harley Quinn with Margot Robbie. Uh, it's gonna end up in the D tier, and it's gonna stay there. Alrighty, we're gonna slide over to the Watchmen, um, just because we need to get rid of the older films, and we can deal with all the MCU and new uh, DCU films. Um, that I haven't touched yet because I really I, I've already done the MCU before and I, very little of my change has a little very little of my opinion has changed and of course a lot of the stuff that's come out since that video popped out have been TV shows I think only She-Hulk dropped after that so um, again not She-Hulk and Quantum Medium I apologize but we're not talking about Quantum Medium today so um, my opinion has very little changed um, but I'm also trying to just try to speak critically here when we talk about these films so. Um, all right, The Watchmen. Zack Snyder has entered the, the fray again. He was with the Man of Steel. Um, I do believe The Watchmen is much better than the Man of Steel. Um, by how much? Not by much. I think it's gonna go like one, two, three, four, four spots above it. I think that's a fair spot. I think that you can't 
The Watchmen is a hard adaptation. I haven't watched the TV show yet, but um, overall, this film is it's it's very long, but it, I think that enough of the time is filled in with nice things. I've rewatched it a few times since I originally watched it back in like 2019, um, and overall, I think it's a, it's a nice spin on uh, superheroes, and I think it's also um, very well done, especially with the Ozzy Man DS being one of the better villains of all time. I th but overall, I think it, it's. It's important, it's important literature, but I don't know if it's important enough film. All right, let's go talk about Eternals because it's it's going to be in these these bottom tiers. I think I think that Eternals is is boring. It's long. It's slow. It, it's not fun. I think the only good parts about it this is Mercari. Otherwise, everything else is boring. It's very two D, very bland. It's just this is the biggest hit and miss from Eternals. And people like this movie. That's fine. But I, I think this is. This is the biggest MCU miss in a long time, if not of all time. It is of all time. What am I talking about? I'm looking at all these other films. This is the biggest miss of all time uh, for the MCU. Um, and it's going to go at the beginning of garbage. That feels wrong to put there, but you know what? I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick to my guns. It's the beginning of garbage. Moving on, let's talk about Wonder Woman. Um, the first Wonder Woman movie is amazing. A lot of people have turned on it since Wonder Woman's 84's uh, debut. But I think the first Wonder Woman is amazing. I think it's still one of the better DC films we've gotten. Um, the best DC films? No. But I think overall it is up here and with the greats. I think that it deserves a place here. And I think the Wonder Woman is still a great film. I When I rewatch it, I still have a fun time. The third act is a little messy, but you know what? So we're half these third acts. What are we talking about? The CBMs really don't land very well. But... When they do, they're really fucking good, so, um, yeah, I think Wonder Woman is fantastic. I think that, um, people are hating on it because it's the DCU. Hate on it all you want. It's over. It's fucking done. But, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. Wonder Woman 84, on the other hand, is not very good. It is, uh, one of the bigger hit and, hit and misses of the last few years, uh, aside from, like, Eternals. Um, but I do like a lot of it i still think that um pedrescu is one of the better villains i think that the cheetah design is good i think that they had it they had a pathway they wanted to do um but they don't i don't think that Patty jenkins really landed it i don't think that she was really um i think when she, she was given the responsibility here she kind of fell apart um uh, i don't know what happened between 2017 and wonder woman and wonder Woman 84 but something happened and it didn't pan out very well. And you know what? What I'm waiting for is going to pop right in front of Spawn. All right, let's let's work back on the MCU uh, part. Let's go into the duo of women-led films. Um, let's talk about Captain Marvel first. A lot of people hate Captain Marvel because they're misogynists. That's simple as as it. I just rewatched it recently, and it's kind of what spun this movie, not the movie, with this video overall for because i think that it didn't get a fair shake it, it, it's it's fun it's 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 lighthearted. it's it's got a lot of heart in it it's overall a fun time i think that uh, it got a lot of hate because brie, brie larson was part of it but also she acts the same as tony stark for half of it and she's just a better character she has got a, I, I i think that a lot of people hate it for no reason and i think that it, it's gonna go uh, low east rainbow far from home i think it's plenty fun i think that people are just giving me a lot of hate because they can and i think the same good thing goes for black widow people think this is also bottom tier it's not it's a good film overall am i saying that because florence Pugh is in it yes but you know what that's a good reason and i'm gonna put it uh right behind i mean veteran too and i'm gonna like it there because i think it's it's pretty average but i think also it's um Got a little redeeming factor. So it's, it's it's a wonderful film. I think that people don't give enough shot for it. Don't give it enough time. They don't talk about it enough. I think that right after um, Endgame, people were expecting hit after hit after hit, like big spontaneous like crossover events. And but the thing is, you gotta re you gotta they had to reset it because you can't just go back. They can't just do that every time because again, it gets boring. But you know what? I think eventually in the next like two three years that these films. Um, they got a lot of hate, especially after Endgame. Um, we'll get a lot more love, and I think that's 
I'm waiting on that because I I've loved these since the start. I think that the after in game films have been very well done. I think that they well could use a little bit more time in the incubator. Have outdone a lot of other phases, especially like phase two, which I think was very weak. Um, but overall, I think that um, Black Widow is a pretty good film. Let's talk about Joker. Joker is a film that had occurred, um, for better or worse, it, 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 it happened. Um, I think that my issue with it is the people around it. I think that people aspired to be Joker. It's the same with Patrick Bateman. You shouldn't be. It's literally a cautionary tale, and it's 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 not that good of a film in, in all reality. I, I I'm gonna throw it into the C tier. I just I'm trying to find a spot to put it here. I think I'm gonna put it right here. It's an Oscar winning film, but I also think that it's overrated. I think that people give it too much because it was a villain film that was actually like done well because like when people talk about Venom they don't really like Venom for whatever reason um but Joker's it, it's just Taxi Driver just go watch Taxi Driver it's much better and you don't need to deal with Joker hopefully Joker 2 is better I um, the set picks have got me a little cautious about it but you know whatever uh, it, it'll, it'll come out we'll watch it Black Panther the first Black Panther um I think is heavily overrated I think that the first Black Panther is good but I also think that it's not one of the better MCU. It's not one of the better MCU. It's one of the better MCU films, like top 10 ish. Um, but I also don't think it's one of the better comic book films of all the time. I think that's going to slide right into B tier pretty easily. I'm going to throw it right over. Actually, no, we'll throw it, we'll throw it into A tier. We'll throw it into lower A tier. Um, right above Spider Man Homecoming. I think that's a proper place to put it. I think that that's that. I think that's a proper place to put it in general. I think that's a nice spot for it. I think that um, that's what it deserves. Now, Black Panther: What Kind of Forever? I think is a better film. It's still going to be an A's here, but I think we can throw it over here in this area. Um, it, it it does a lot of improvements. I think that overall, that the uh, the honoring of uh, Chadwick Boseman is is touching. I think that. Um, the film is a lot about grief and honor, and, and I think that they, they do it wonderfully and they do it perfectly. I think that uh, What Kind of Forever is easily um, up there in the top 10 of um, the MCU. Much like its counterpart, it's it, the counterpart is good, it's just not as good as it the, the, the sequel. Um, but Let's get the final DC movies out of the way before we really get into um, the Avengers films. Well, Avengers, I love I love the Avengers films for last because that's what everyone um, has probably been waiting for. I think um, besides like Spider Man, Batman, but Aquaman, um, it, it's really good. Um, there's a there's a there's a part of it I really don't like, but you know what? Aquaman is really good, and I'm gonna throw it into B tier pretty easily. I think I'm right above Multiverse of Madness. Um, I think that it, it, a lot of it's forgettable, but I also think that when you go back and watch it, it's a fun time. I think a lot of people enjoy it, and I think that um, overall, I think Aquaman really deserves its place in the B tier ter territory. Moving on, we're going to go talk about Justice League, which is before Aquaman technically in the timeline, um, and I really just don't want to talk about it because there's a lot of, it's more of the behind the issues. I, the film is poorly done, <laughs> which is really sad for me because I really love DC, uh, but the Justice League film is not good um the center cut is good but we're not talking about that. that's that's theatric um we're talking about theatrics here um but i also think that uh it's not it's not because it's not the greatest cbm of all time people think that it is it's not um but the original justice league cut is all the place it's it's weirdly shot it's it's gross and not in like a gross way like yeah like horror like gore and shit like that it's gross by like moral standards um and i really i really hate justice league and i'm, I'm gonna throw it into the f territory it's not good i i don't want to ever i literally threw away my blu-ray case for this um just like it's not a good film is that a hot take i don't think that's much of a hot take is it it better not be um <laughs> Black Adam is, I talked about this in the worst films of 2022, 
Uh, black and is what films do not want to be, and that is boring or just bland. It, it's the worst thing you can do as a film is just be boring. See, these, some of these films are shitty. They're really shitty. They suck dick. But guess what? I can laugh at some of them. This is just this is just muck. This is just muck. It's disgusting. I want to spit on its grave. It, it's bad. It's gonna go in that territory as well. Um. Yeah. Shazam is. It's a weird thing for me. I, I I'm not gonna put it there, but I'm, I'm gonna throw it there for now. Um. I think it's a pretty average film. I think that it has a lot of had a lot of like. It has a lot of good points, but also has a lot of things that's just kind of like okay. And I think that overall, I think it's an alright film. I think it's a pretty good film. I think it's probably, I think it's still it's painfully average. Uh, and I don't know how painful it actually is, but I'm gonna throw it right uh, behind. Um, I'm gonna put it right in front of Men in Black Three. I think that's a proper place to put it. I think it's good. I just don't think it's fantastic. If I were to get the Shang-Chi before we get into the Avengers films, uh, Shang-Chi, I think, is still top MCU, but I don't think it's, like, S-tier MCU. I was, I, like, I, I, it's, it's S-tier MCU, but not S-tier CBM. Um, I'm going to put it right here because I think it's the proper place to put it. I still think it's, like, top three um, MCU, and I think that it, I think... We don't talk about it enough, and I think a lot of people think because it's just face forward, it's bad. But the choreography, the story, the, the acting is just wonderfully done. The comedy is actually good. I think that Shang Chi is one of the better films in the MCU, and I think that's a is it a hot take? It might be a hot take. I think that's probably a hot take, but you know what? I'm happy with it. All right, we're gonna talk about the Avengers films. The Avengers one. It's also in the painfully average territory with Shazam. I gotta say, it's very painfully average. I'm gonna throw it right here. I, I think that while it, it's epic in scale and, and and it was the first time he hits all these characters together, I think it's still painfully average to go back and watch it compared to the other MCU films by themselves, if not the other Avengers films. So I think that Avengers is gonna, is gonna stick right there. It's long, it's, it's straightforward, and when it really shouldn't be. But uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna stick the landing rate at the lower B side. And joining it will be Avengers: um, Age of Ultron. It's a little straightforward, but I think Ultron's a better villain. I think overall they 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 adjust the characters enough where they you know are characters. I think that Joss Whedon really has a problem writing characters, especially female characters. But that's a whole another story. You can go to YouTube and find out a fuck ton of videos about characters uh, from Joss Whedon. Um, but yeah, I, I think they feel more like friends, and I think that's what them proves from Age of Ultron. And also, this is the introduction of Livy Olsen as um, Scarlet Witch, which is the biggest plus that the MCU's ever had. So it's gonna go right um, here. Right next to it, it's fun, but it's just a tiny bit better. Uh, Avengers Infinity War is the best Avengers film, and it's gonna go into high A tier. I think I'm gonna put it right here. Yeah, right between Deadpool 2 and 1. One and two, I would not call it. Um, I think that I, that's the proper place to put it. I think it's um, right behind Spider Man No Hell. People are not going to like that, that pick, but you know what? I'm going to stick with it. I think that Avengers Mindy War is the better, uh, best Avengers film we've gotten to date. Um, with the the scale, the acting, the, the CG, the everything around it, the, the, the story is a lot better. And I think that. Um, a lot of people take it for granted when it comes to that. And I think that's what... When people think about Avengers Endgame, I think they think of it as, like, Avengers Infinity War and Endgame together. But I think that's the worst thing you can do right here because... Um, they're not the same film. <laughs> and I think that that's a terrible thing to do. And I think Avengers Infinity War is a lot better there than uh, Endgame. And I think that Endgame gets too much love. And... It's going to be a super hot dig. But it's it's a C tier movie. Critically speaking in my mind. I think that's the proper place to put it. I think. Yeah I, I think this is the proper place to put all these films. I think overall. I think that the CBM has come a long way. And I think that Avengers Endgame was thought of as like the end game. Literally the end game for um, the CBM. But I, overall I think it did not hit the landing. And I think that also... Leans into my level for the Phase 4. I think Phase 4 
um, kind of like expands the world again. I think while well, Avengers Endgame was trying to close the book um, when the book didn't need to be closed. I think that overall that Avengers Endgame is just kind of like it's it's first of all it's disgusting to look at um, and the time travel feels wrong like it that it's just not it's a way to get out of the jam they were in because they killed everyone in infinity war and they didn't want to live with it so uh in the the, the treatment of fat thor the the they put randomly fortnite in there which is odd um but that's not really a diss to it but um yeah i i think that the cbm has gone a long way it has had well over 100 entries again i i forgot a few that appear like morbius and i didn't put the new uh cbms that I've released in 2023 we'll collect a medium and shazam um mostly because i haven't seen them but also i wanted to keep it kind of quick because concise um as like a point in history so tell me guys what you think in the comments below but thank you guys for watching i'm the bad duck and you are the internet i hope you guys have a good rest of your day leave your comments about the whole list in the comments below obviously uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.